Welcome back to my kitchen, Plow and Pantry people. Today is the last day of January 2024. I am making some Dijon mustard today, and I'm actually just starting the process today. Um, it's Thursday, I think, and I am finishing it tomorrow because Dijon mustard is a two to three day process. So you'll see this video on Saturday with all of it put together. But this is the last day of the collaboration with my friends. You can see their channels below where we were all doing canning projects in January. Um, it's not the end of canning for me though. I will be canning a lot here. Um, but this is a fun one. I like to make Dijon mustard. This is um, from the ball canning recipe book. I'll link that book below. But let's get started because this is a process. It's not, it's actually not hard or long. It just takes a lot of sitting time in between. So I'm starting with about two cups of onion. I have a mix here of white and red onion because I already had part of a red onion sitting in my fridge and I wanted to use that up. And then I cut into a whole yellow onion as well. The yellow is what the recipe calls for. Um, and to that, I am going to add, let's see, I have two cups of white wine here. This is Chardonnay. You want to dry white wine. And I also need a cup of vinegar. Now, the recipe calls for white wine vinegar. This is apple cider vinegar. I like the taste of this one better. You can replace the vinegar in the recipe so long as you stick with the acidity level. And the recipe calls for a 5% acidity vinegar white wine vinegar. This is 5% acidity apple cider vinegar. So it's okay as long as you keep that level the same as far as food safety goes, okay? Also going to put in some garlic, quite a bit, and salt and pepper. I'm putting this teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of ground pepper. You can use whole pepper cloves so that it strains out later, but um, I actually like it kind of peppery. So I'm getting this in. And then rosemary. I'm like looking at my ingredients here. Rosemary, the recipe calls for um, a sprig of fresh rosemary. I don't have a sprig of fresh rosemary. You can replace dried. What we're doing in this part of the process, I'm gonna get this turned on really is we're just kind of infusing the vinegar and wine with other flavors. So the rosemary isn't even gonna stay in there in the long term. So I have this going on in here. I am just going to bring it up to a boil and then let it boil for, well, I'm gonna simmer it for like 15, 20 minutes, get those onions soft and all that flavor from the herbs and spices and onions into the vinegar and wine mixture. Okay, it has just started to boil and I'm going to just turn it down and let it simmer for 15, 20 minutes until the onions are soft. Okay, this has been simmering for almost 20 minutes. Everything looks soft, I'm turning it off. And now I'm gonna get a jar here and I like to use a canning funnel, it makes it cleaner and a strainer. And I'm just gonna strain the solids out and get all of the liquid into the jar. That was simmering uncovered, so some of it has evaporated out. That pink color is because I had some red onions in there. If you use just yellow onion, it won't do that. It'll look more golden. Pressing down a little bit just to make sure I'm squeezing all the liquid out. Okay, and then this can be discarded into the compost. Um, what I'm gonna add now is the actual mustard part. So I am using a cup of whole mustard. This is, I ordered this from Amazon. I can link it below, you can also get a good deal on whole mustard seeds at um, Azure, Azure Standard, which I will link below. I'm using the third cup measure, so I need three scoops, um, partly because that fits in my bag better and partly because I know I need a third cup of my dry mustard. That way I'm only dirtying one, one measuring cup. Okay, 
so then I need a third of a cup of dry mustard. Now I ordered this from Azure. You can get dry bulk measure uh, mustard from them. A pretty good deal. Um, I ordered it um, a couple months ago. I was doing a bulk prep day of doing like um, different mixes, things like that, where I needed a bunch of dry mustard. So I'm getting that all mixed in together. And then I'm just sitting a lid on this. And this goes on the counter for 24 to 48 hours. I'm usually somewhere 24 to 36 hours. Um, I've never gone past 48, but the directions are pretty clear in the ball book to not go past 48 hours. I'm not sure what happens there, if it molds or ferments or what have you, but um, we finish this off tomorrow. Right now, those mustard seeds and the mustard powder are soaking in all the flavors we added with the wine and the vinegar and the onion and the rosemary and the salt and pepper, all that stuff. So this just sits on your counter. See, it's not a very involved or difficult thing to make Dijon mustard. It just, it has a lot of sit time in between things. So this is what we have. I'll see you guys tomorrow. It is the next day and here's what we're gonna do. I have my jar of mustard here. It has absorbed all of that liquid. And I'm gonna get it into my blender. I should mention that this is not a um, really smooth Dijon mustard. It's kind of grainy, um, which I like it that way. It's fine. If you have one of those high powered blenders, like a Vitamix, you might be able to get yours smooth. Um, I don't, but I'm okay with the graininess. Um, I'm gonna get all this that I can out into my blender here. And I have next to me, I've got on the stove right now, I've got my water bath canner going with my jars inside. And um, I've got a saucepan there too, because this is gonna have to cook. So the recipe calls for two and two thirds cup water. You don't necessarily need all of that though. I like to start with a smaller amount and I'm gonna get this on and just blend it until it's a consistency that I like. The recipe asks for um, an oatmeal, like a cooked oatmeal consistency. I kind of just go for a personal preference of consistency. <laughs> First, it might seem liquidy, but then it starts to kind of absorb some of that and it thickens up quite a bit. Pour some more in there. It will also um, thicken up as it cooks on the, um, in the saucepan. is kind of like a milkshake consistency. It smells really good. You can tell it's Dijon mustard. Sometimes I end up using close to all the water, sometimes like half of it. It's really, I don't know if it's the humidity in the air or how old the mustard seeds are or what, but it's, it can vary. I don't think I have ever used the full two and two thirds cups though. You could of course also use a food processor. I just find my personal food processor um, doesn't get things as, um, fine and creamy as my blender does, so. Okay, I'm gonna show you what mine looks like right now. That consistency right there. Okay, now that it is um, a consistency I like, I'm gonna get it into the saucepan here. I may or may not need to add more water as it cooks. Um, I usually add, end up adding at least a little bit. mustardy goodness out of there.
Okay, now that I have this in the saucepan, I am going to, I have the heat on, I'm gonna let it come to a boil, keep my water nearby. It's actually pretty quick. It's already starting to bubble. Wow, that was fast. Um, I usually end up needing to add a tiny bit of water, different days, different amounts. And I'm gonna stir this a little bit, but once it comes to a boil, I'm just gonna let it simmer for five minutes. That's all it needs before it's ready to go into jars. Okay, this is a bit thick. So I'm gonna add some water. It's about a quarter to a third of a cup. Stir that in. And I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer for five minutes and turn it down a little bit. Okay, I'm towards the end of my five minutes here and I'm ending up having to stir pretty constantly, which I don't always have to do, but it's bubbling and, and bursting a lot right now. So I'm, I'm doing that. Um, you would stir it frequently because uh, it will burn, um, but I don't normally have to stir it constantly like this. I was gonna say, this is, this is like plain basic Dijon mustard and um, it's very useful. I use it in salad dressings, marinades, all sorts of things, on sandwiches and stuff. But I also, I like to can it like this and then sometimes I will, I make the smaller four ounce jars because sometimes, there's my timer, turn off my heat. Sometimes I um, will flavor it. Like I will mix in pesto and make a basil mustard or I'll mix in sun-dried tomato and make it a tomato mustard. Um, I've mixed in the cranberry vanilla jam. If you didn't see that, I think I made a video of that. If I did, I'll link it for you. Um, and made a cranberry mustard and that was really good on sandwiches. Turkey, Havarti, mm, that stuff, it was good. Um, so now I ended up using about a one and two third cups of water. I've got about a cup of water left. So um, I would say on average, I use somewhere between one and a half and two and a half cups. Um, I'm gonna get my jars out here. They're getting hot up here in the, the canner. Get these sitting out here and ready to fill. Since I'm using small jars, it is pretty easy to um, make sure they're covered. You should always, when you're water bath canning, you always want to make sure your jars are covered by one to two inches of water. Um, and sometimes while you're bringing it up to a boil, it can lose, you know, it, it evaporates a little bit. But using these short jars, that's not usually a problem. You get these filled, put this back on to keep it as hot as I can while I fill these jars up. Mustard needs a quarter inch head space. So it's almost right up to the top, up to that very last thread. Bring my rings over my lids, I mean, and 
some vinegar to wipe these off. Lids on. They've been soaking in hot water. Put my vinegar in there. And get my rings on. Fingertip tight. Remember, this is hot mustard in hot jars going into hot water. I think I've mentioned it in every January video. You want this stuff to be the same. It's either room temperature, room temperature, room temperature, or it's hot, hot, hot. Okay. Let's get this in the canner. Okay, these process for 10 minutes, but adjusting for altitude, I'm above a thousand feet, I have to add five minutes. So I am doing 15 minutes, but you don't start that time until the water has come back up to a boil. Okay, my water is at a full boil now. So I'm gonna start my timer for 15 minutes, and then it'll be done. Okay, my 15 minute timer just went off, and I like to take the lid off and let it sit for five minutes before I unload the jars, just let everything settle. 